Hi everybody. Are you someone who is looking forward to get into the pharma equipment industry or are you preparing for a pharma equipment job? If yes, then this video is for you. My name is Manoj Swaminathan and I have more than 15 years of experience working in the pharma equipment industry. Today, I am going to talk about the common questions asked during the pharma equipment interview. By far the most common question which any interviewer would start off is tell us something about yourself and this is by far a very tricky question because you have to be very specific you should not spend more than 45 to 60 seconds and you should only talk about why you want to get into pharmacobillion and also provide some basic information about your qualifications and your past experience Another common question is, what do you think about pharmacovigilance? Here is one area where people make a mistake and they talk about the WHO definition. The interviewer is not interested in this response. You can provide some response like uh, pharmacovigilance deals with safe medicines, pharmacovigilance deals with patient safety. So these are things which you can talk about during uh, the pharmacovigilance interview. The next common question is, what is day zero in pharmacovigilance? The right answer is, the day zero is the day when you have information about the four minimum criteria for an adverse event. If you tell this, it is obvious that the next question is going to be, what are the four minimum criteria for adverse events? The four minimum criteria are identifiable patient, identifiable reporter, suspect drug and finally adverse event. This is again a very common question and at times the interviewer may ask you to give some examples about identifiable patient. So if you are asked this question then you can provide information like name, age, gender, date of birth or some reference number or uh, even an email address and so on. The next common question is, what is the difference between an adverse event and adverse drug reaction? Please remember that adverse events happen after consumption of the drug. And adverse event may or may not be associated or causally related to the medicine. You also have something called as adverse drug reaction. So adverse drug reactions are causally related to the drug. Also, please remember that all adverse drug reactions are adverse events, but not vice versa. Next common question is, what are solicited and unsolicited adverse events? So these are basically about the sources of adverse events. Whenever you talk about solicited adverse events, you should use one term and which is organized data collection. Some examples include clinical trials, patient registries or patient support programs and so on. So solicited adverse events are received from organized adverse event data collection mechanisms. And some examples of unsolicited adverse events include the adverse events which are received from literature, which are received uh, from your medical information department. If a patient takes a medicine and experience an adverse event and calls up the company and reports an adverse event or sends an email to the company that he or she has experienced an adverse event then these are examples of unsolicited adverse events so please remember to use the term organized data collection technologies or methods for uh, solicited adverse events these days where people are taking COVID vaccines, this question is getting more and more common. Somebody would ask you, what are AEFIs? You can start off by telling AEFIs are adverse events following immunization. There is a possibility that somebody may ask you, what is the difference between immunization and vaccination? So that's a separate topic. I wouldn't touch base on that topic. You can always uh, reach out to us if you want more information on that. Another common question is, what is de-challenge and re-challenge? So de-challenge and re-challenge are 
associated with stoppage of medicine or restarting of the medicine and what is the impact on the adverse event. For example, a patient takes a medicine, has a rash, patient stops the medicine or reduces the dose of the medicine and the rash disappears, then this is positive de-challenge. If the patient stops the medicine and uh, doesn't experience an adverse event and patient again starts the medicine and again has an adverse event, then it is a positive re-challenge. So this is again a common question asked during the pharmacovalence interviews. Uh, another common question is whether all adverse events are serious. So he, here the interviewer is trying to understand whether you know some info, or you know about the seriousness criteria in pharmacovigilance. The various seriousness criteria in pharmacovigilance include hospitalization, which can be initial or prolonged. The patient may end up with some kind of a disability or it can be a life-threatening condition. A patient may die after an adverse event or it can be a congenital anomaly where the parent takes the medicine and the child suffers. So when I say parent, it can be either the mother or the father. Apart from this, there is one more seriousness criteria, which is medically significant adverse event. So, or something which is also called as important medical events. The next common question is, what is the difference between a co-suspect and a concomitant medication? Please remember one thing, a co-suspect medication may be a company product or may not be a company product. And a concomitant medication is necessarily or more commonly not a company product. And uh, the term suspect itself implies that there may be some kind of a causal relationship with the adverse event. So whenever somebody asks you what is a co-suspect medicine, then you can say that a co-suspect medicine or a medication may have a causal association with the adverse event. Another common question is, what are the various outcomes of adverse events? So that is, what is the fate of an adverse event? The common examples or the common terminologies include recovered or resolved. An adverse event may get resolved or the adverse event may be resolving. That is, the patient is feeling better. Or it may be not recovered, not resolved. That the patient has uh, stopped the medicine but the adverse event continues. Or at times, the patient may die after experiencing an adverse event. And finally, the outcome may be unknown where the patient is not traceable, where this information may not be available. Then comes a, a tricky question, and that is, what is a signal? Here, the interviewer is not expecting too much information from you. But if you are able to answer this question, then it is for sure that the interviewer is going to be impressed with your candidature. For this question, you can probably provide this response that a signal is a significant safety issue associated with a medicine. And you can give an example of a blood clot with a vaccine. Or you can talk about uh, an anaphylaxis or a severe allergic reaction with a medicine which was previously not known to cause allergies. So these are some examples which you can give and impress the interviewer. Then another common question, what are SUSARs and SAEs? So SAEs are serious adverse events and SUSARs are suspected, unexpected, serious adverse reactions. If you remember, we had seen one question, the difference between adverse event and adverse drug reaction. So same concept even can be applied here that all SAEs are adverse events and all SUSARs are adverse drug reactions. That means there is a causal relationship in case of SUSARs where there may or may not be any causal relationship in, an, in a serious adverse event. Also, all SUSARs may be serious adverse events. So even that is something which you can always say. 
and if the interview is of is for a job where you need to do some clinical trial safety report processing then in that case you are bound to receive such a question then there can be role specific questions what activities does a drug safety associate perform you can provide information like data entry quality review writing narratives or seriousness assessment or uh, say medical coding and if you are looking for a job as a medical reviewer then the questions may be different where people may talk about or you may talk about causality you can again talk about seriousness assessment and you can talk about the overall uh, case sense which is the ultimate accountability of the medical reviewer so this is again a uh, context specific or role specific question and if you are looking for a job as a medical writer then it is by far uh, somebody uh, wants to understand your communication methods then this is a tricky question where somebody may ask you that why you want to get into pharmacovigilance and uh, if you are a say pharmacist then why do you want to leave a uh, hospital pharmacist job and get into pharmacovigilance or if you are a physician then why do you want to leave practice medical practice and get into pharmacovigilance so these are tricky questions where you need to provide a very candid response uh, i always prefer to provide this response that i am very passionate about patient safety and i want to serve uh, the patients so something like this uh, may impress the interviewer then the interviewer may at times ask this question name few regulatory authorities and uh, most of the people would end up talking about fda or european medicines agency but if you can give some other examples that will be very useful for example pmda in japan health canada or the mhra in the uk or you can talk about other countries as well what are the different phases of clinical trials uh, i completely agree with you that these are not always asked during pharmacovigilance interviews but then it may be context specific where somebody wants to understand whether you know anything beyond uh, pharmacovigilance where some but you may ask you this question so it is very simple where you need to just talk about pre clinical phases phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 and phase 4 it is possible that somebody would ask you the different or uh, the other name of phase 4 uh, clinical trials where you can talk about post marketing surveillance okay then there may be context specific questions as well i'll give an example of the covid-19 scenario where we had lot of new vaccines in the market and uh, many companies were trying to hire uh, personnel for processing the adverse events associated with the covid vaccines so in such scenarios uh, we had this very common question what are the various covid-19 vaccines available in your country and in which phase they are so the context may vary with time and you should be well prepared or if you know why you are getting interviewed then you should definitely know uh, more about the current affairs then this is again a very common question again not related to pharmacovigilance but then yes uh, very common interview question what do you know about our company and this is where i would always recommend that you should do detailed analysis of the company where you are going to get interviewed where you can look at the various products that company is offering or the various activities the company is uh, offering for example if it is a service provider what all activities does the company perform so this is something you can and uh, that this is one thing where or one area where people falter so if you can prepare then it is well and good then what are your strengths so this is again a tricky question 
where uh, everybody feels that uh, they are strong in all areas but at that moment you need to remember two or three strengths so this is again uh, individual specific but if you can tell something it will be very useful for example if uh, you are very good at time management then you can say that or uh, if you are uh, very good in terms of teamwork you can tell that but then please remember that somebody is also going to ask you some examples so be ready with some examples as well and if somebody is asking you about your strengths it is quite possible that they are also going to ask you about your weaknesses and here is where you have to be very careful if you are talking about any weakness because at any point if i ask you about your weaknesses you may say that i don't have any but if you can prepare at least say two or three areas where you want to improve then that will be very useful for example i came across one person who said that uh, i am not very good at time management and uh, the interviewer asked that uh, okay uh, can you give me some examples and that person gave the example and then the next question was what do you think how you can improve so whenever you talk about weaknesses you also think about how you can overcome such weaknesses then the interviewer may also give you some uh, tactical situations again they are only looking at your attitude and whether uh, you are somebody who is flexible and uh, also something about your teamwork and also your other uh, say strategies and so on i'll give you some examples what will you do okay so this is one specific example today is 3rd of january and you have 15 case reports or icsrs due for regulatory reporting on the 6th of january and your colleague is on an emergency leave you have enrolled in a pharmacovigilance conference that is scheduled on 6th of january what will you do in such situations the interviewer is primarily looking at uh, whether you are flexible whether you can stretch and whether you can uh, work extra time and complete your work so this is something which you would need to convey to the interviewer i'll give you one more example what will you do okay and this is where you have captured a wrong day zero in a case report and uh, that is 5th january instead of 3rd january and the case was submitted on the 19th of january and your team lead and the team manager are not aware of, about this error and on 25th jan you came across this error while you were going through your worksheet now it is up to you whether you want to go and tell your manager up front that i have made a mistake or else you can keep silent if you can uh, tell to the interviewer that uh, i would go back to my team lead or team manager and confess that i have made a mistake why i made this mistake and how i will ensure that i don't commit this mistake again so if you can try to convey this it will be brilliant and the interviewer would remain impressed at times the interviewer may assign a mini project and this happens when you have too many candidates and quite a few are good and but then you still need to select one of them so this is where you may end up getting a mini project so this is something where you have to uh, uh perform this activity in a very dedicated manner primarily the interviewer wants to understand your knowledge about the subject and your team work whether you would uh, say write something that okay uh, i would need support from so and so people and uh, we all can do this work or uh, how you would do it what all stakeholders you would involve in your project so this all will be useful so this is these are some common questions which are asked during the interview questions i hope you found this uh, to be useful uh, feel free to contact us if you have any questions comments or suggestions thank you